Aber denke dir so ein großes Werk. Imagine a work so large that it mirrors the entire world. So said Gustav Mahler, a visionary composer who sought to create a new kind of music of such immensity and scope that it could invoke the very forces that created the cosmos. <laughs> A music so dramatically charged that it possesses the power to change us. In Mahler's third symphony, a voice intones the great questions of existence. Oh man, beware. What does Deep Midnight tell us? We yearn for happiness and life, yet there is suffering and death. Seeking answers to life's contradictions, Mahler tapped the wisdom of a living planet. Es ist kaum noch mehr Musik. It isn't music anymore, but rather a mystical, immense sound of nature. Can music shape a world and reveal life's deepest secrets? Will we be changed by entering that world? Mahler's epic journey begins with the creation of the cosmos. For his third symphony, Mahler assembled singers and an orchestra of unprecedented size. They perform what Mahler described as a musical poem that travels through all the stages of evolution. The first movement alone develops two immense themes, the creation of the world, which he named Pan Awakes, and the relentless self-assertion of life, called Summer Marches In. After this enormous fanfare of the awakening of life, Mahler does something quite unexpected. All of the energy dissipates down to almost a quiet rumble. And he reduces the musical elements to the barest, uh, the most essential gesture of difference, and that is the notion of oscillation. Two notes alternating, and a universe vibrates into existence. Chaos begins to take on form. Timelessness gives way to a definite pulse from the bass drum. There is 
is a lot of rather disconnected bits and pieces of musical material, none of which have long life. They're rather like those primary particles that we know about from physics that don't exist for very long. Things that appear and disappear, they sort of glow in the dark and then fade away. But now it's the world. Out of unfathomable silence, it is the world, nature as a whole, that is awakened into tones and sounds. There is such energy unleashed that there is an element of terror and of overwhelming power that can go very wrong. One senses a force there at work that's dangerous, that one shouldn't just romanticize. Mahler thought of calling this first movement what the mountains tell me was Felsengebirge we had seen, the cliffs rock and it's not coincidental that in Schopenhauer's philosophy there's a very hierarchical description of life that begins with inorganic matter, in fact, with rocks. The ideas of the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer deeply influenced Mahler and help explain much of the conflict in his third symphony. According to Schopenhauer, the universe and everything in it comes into being through the action of a single underlying force he called the will. Why do we live? Why do you live? Why do you have to live? It is the will to life that makes you want to live. The Schopenhauerian picture suggests that the whole world of created matter is brought into being by an underlying will, um, which then turns itself into individuated matter, uh, which is things and organisms. All plants, all animals, uh, all human beings are driven forward by this invisible force, by this overwhelming force. The will has a single purpose, to propagate and perpetuate itself. This it does through ceaseless competition and struggle. As unwitting agents of the will, all living creatures are doomed to a narrow, limited experience of the world. Only the artist, Schopenhauer believed, has the power to perceive a deeper reality not deformed by the will. The artist raises big questions, but we don't just raise big questions as human beings, we try to come up with answers. All the scholarly disciplines, history, biology, are efforts by the human community to come up with better answers than any of us will come up with on our own. Mahler, being a master of the musical idiom, his answers to the existential questions were musical answers. Not all in life is struggle. Mahler introduces the playful and creative side of nature in a passage labeled, Pan Sleeps. Once awakened, Pan, the Greek goat god, will call up the whole teeming pageant of living creatures. The Romantics loved the metaphor of Pan as this deep terrestrial spirit whose name in ancient Greek means all. And so there's a sense of the spirit that is in everything. melody, which we now hear in the cellos, keeps shifting shape, eventually taking the unexpected guise of a marching band.
Mahler didn't hesitate to borrow from popular elements along the way. Well, everybody has experienced a march, for example. Marching band music awakens in us the experience of watching a marching band go by, you know, of participating in something with many other people. So we have this idea of the image of life developing as a kind of march of life. Uh, and a march moves, it goes in a particular direction, it involves taking people with it. Once the march is underway, it opens up to an enormous vista, a huge panorama of sound. Which sounds like the moment before fulfillment. Just as we think we're going to reach the top, it all collapses. Exactly that, that idea that we thought we'd gotten away from. It's the stirrings of life once again and the struggle to get out. The stirrings of life must break out of their frozen prison. The first movement of Mahler's Third Symphony develops into a ferocious struggle between the turbulent forces of life and the dead silence of winter. For this battle, Mahler drew upon the ideas of perhaps the most radical thinker of his time, Friedrich Nietzsche. What's very important for Mahler was Nietzsche's notion that Greek art had had a heroic period in which religion and art Refused. In the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche, Mahler saw a connection between the creation of the universe and human creativity. Nietzsche wrote that art arose from the interaction of two contrary forces, represented in Greek mythology by the gods Dionysus and Apollo. <laughs> 